So happy to be here. Welcome to this presentation. And I'm Mauricio. I work as a software engineer for Microsoft. I part of the Kimball team there. And in today's presentation, I will show you how to debug a Kubernetes cluster by using eBPF based tools. Okay, so in the agenda of today, I want to show you to describe a little bit what is the problem about debugging a Kubernetes cluster. I will explain which are some of the traditional tools that we use to do that task. I will give a demo of that. And then I will introduce this inspector gadget project. I will show how it works. And then I will present also a demo of this project. So yeah, let's get started. We, we all know that debugging a Kubernetes cluster is not that easy. So when there is something that is not working on a Kubernetes cluster, the first thing that we do is usually we check if the pods are running to see if there is any pod that is crashing or something like that. We also check the logs of the pods to see if there is something going on there. And in some cases, we don't have all the information that we need there, and we have to use other tools to get some more information about what is going on on our cluster. But what happens with Kubernetes is that, you know, Kubernetes is this distributed operating system. So our services are usually running on different nodes. So you don't know where they are running or better, even if you don't know, if you know, this is not easy to trace the microservice because that's not running locally on your machine. So you have to connect to a host, you have to connect to other one, and also in this microservices era, you have all those small services that are communicating to each other. So when there is something that is not working fine, there are so many things that you have to understand, that you have to look at to see what's wrong. Maybe there is a networking problem, maybe there is a storage problem with a given host. So there are a, a ton of things that could be going wrong in a given cluster. There are some traditional tools. I call them traditional because those are tools that are designed to trace what is going on on a single node. So when you have a process, a monolithic application, you can use those tools to understand what is going on. But those tools are designed to work in a single node. So they are tools that are not designed to work in Kubernetes. And one of the limitations of those tools is that they are not container aware. What it means is that if you want to filter what is going on, if you want to understand what is going on on a given container, you cannot do that by using those tools. Maybe you are able to filter by a given PID, by a given process, but there is no an easy way to understand what a given container is doing by using those tools. Also, they are not integrated with Kubernetes at all. What it means is that they don't pr provide any information about Kubernetes. So they are able to capture the activity on the host, but they don't enrich the information with Kubernetes related information. So yeah, let me show you how those tools work and some of the limitations that they have. Okay. So before going into the tools, I want to show you the a application that I want to deploy here. This is a very simple HTTP server that is composed of three different replicas, three different pods. And in this case, I have configured some things related to security. So I have CTL there configured. I also have a second profile. And I also have limited the list of capabilities that this application can use. Also, I have limited the resources that my application can use. And yeah, finally, this is just exposed as a node port service on, on the cluster. Let me deploy the application and check if that's working. So just want to send a lot of requests to be sure that this is working fine. As you see, this is a very, very simple HTTP server there. So what about if we want to understand what is going on on that application? If we want to say the activity that this application is performing on the cluster. So let me open a different terminal. I will use in that to send some requests to the cluster. And in the terminal on the top, I'm going to run some of those traditional tools that I was talking before. In this case, this is a very simple cluster by Minikube. I have two different nodes there. And in order to 
trace what is going on, I have to SSH in one of the nodes, and I have to install those traditional tools there. I'm not going to talk about how I did install those tools there. I think this is not important for this presentation, but in a real case, you will have to find a way to install the tools in the different nodes. So I log into the MiniQ N02 node. I have different tools there pre-installed. And yeah, let me execute some of them. For instance, let me start with TCP Tracer. This is gonna show you the different TCP connections that are being processed by this node. And if you see in the below window, I'm sending some requests to that, but not all the requests are being printed in the window there. The reason is that there are three different replicas, two nodes, so only some of the requests are going on to that node. So what happens here is that we have a partial view of what is happening on the cluster. We are only having the events on a single node, and we don't have like a global view of all the activity that is going on on the cluster. And yeah, also in the events that we have there, there is no information about Kubernetes. We have the PID, we have the name of the process, and yeah, in this specific case, we have the source address, so by having the source address, we will be able to see what is the pod that was processing that request, but you know, this is something that is not easy to do, and if you are trying to debug a problem, this is something that you would not like to do manually in all the cases. Let me show you a different tool. This is OpenSnoop. This is to show the different files that are being opened on a given system. As you can see, there is a simple node, only two pods running there, and there is a lot of activity going there. So if this was a real one with 100 pods, that would be even more activity there. I sent some requests to that, and what I'm trying to look there is to see if I'm able to understand the files that my application is trying to access. But as you can see there, there is a lot of information, a lot of events that I really don't care about because those are not related to my application, but yeah, there is no an easy way to understand what is going on there. In this case, there is a possibility. I could try to check what is the name of the process of my application to get the PID, and then I could try to filter only by the events that are generated by that given PID. So yeah, while preparing this demo, I realized that I have to use the PID of this NG's worker process. So let's pass that to open as no. So this is only going to print the open files by that given process. Again, I sent some requests, but you know, not all the times this is printing because this is only, only going to print the events when the requests arrive to that specific pod. So yeah, in this case, we are able to see uh, what is the file, what is the process, and so on. So let me go back to the presentation here. So let me introduce the Inspector Gadget project. So the idea of this project is that we want to fill the gap that is in those traditional tools, or whether those traditional tools are great, there is a lot of for on implementing those tools, but those tools are not a good fit for Kubernetes. So Inspector Gadget is a project that is trying to close that gap. The idea here is to make those tools easier to use in Kubernetes. This is heavily inspired by a similar project that is called kubectl trace, and we reduce many of the tools from the BCC project. Of course, we use eBPF as a building technology. We inject eBPF's programs into the kernel to understand what is going on. And yeah, we are Kubernetes aware. What it means is that we are able to filter the events for a given Kubernetes, let's say namespace, pod, whatever. And we also provide Kubernetes information for the events that we capture on the cluster. And additionally to that, we provide a kubectl plugin. What it means is that a user that is used to use a kubectl doesn't have to learn how to use a completely new tool. So we provide an interface that is as aligned as possible to kubectl. So for instance, how to filter by a given namespace, how to configure the kubeconfi of the cluster that you want to handle, and so on, that's done directly or better in the same way in the same way as it is done by kubectl. 
So what are the features of a inspector gadget? We are able to filter by Kubernetes, as I mentioned before. If you want to get the bands of a given namespace, if you want to get the bands of a given pods with some labels, this is possible. And we provide the, we enrich those events with Kubernetes information. One characteristic that I say is very important about inspector gadget is that this is very simple to install. I mean, when you are trying to fit something in your cluster, you don't want to worry about installing something that is very difficult to set up. So the idea here is to have something that is very, very easy to do, that you only have to run like one command, and that's it, because the idea is that we are providing a tool to fit the problem. So you don't want to get into trouble installing that tool. And this is, I would say, more like a detail, but this is an important one. So. There are some cases when you have a pod, and when the pod tries to run, there is a crash just at the beginning, and you don't know what is going on. Maybe you don't even have the logs of that pod because this is just crashing at the beginning. So we have a bunch of logic, uh, I will say complex uh, mechanism in Inspector Gadget to be able to capture the first events of a container. So we have a mechanism that when a container is starting, we stop the creation of the container for a bit, then we set up all the infrastructure that we need, then we let the creation of the container go, and what it allows us is that we are able to trace the very first events that the container is doing. So we have the complete information about what the container is doing from the very beginning. And this is something that is like an ongoing work so we are trying to implement some APIs for different users. So, so far we have some Golan packages that can be used by third party applications. So if you are implementing a Golan application and you want to understand what are the processes that are created in a host, the TCP connections that are created, you can use, reuse our Golan packages and then you don't have to implement the eBPF logic by yourself. This is the inspector gadget architecture. We deploy inspector gadget as a daemon set on the cluster. So there is a, an inspector gadget pod per each node. Then there we use, we inject those eBPF programs into the kernel. As, as you know, the kernel is shared between all the pods running on the same node. So by injecting those programs, we are able to capture, we are able to trace information from those different pods. Uh, in this case, the user interacts with this uh, kubectl gadget plugin, and yeah, we implement like a controller uh, approach where we use the API server to restore those custom resource, and the inspector gadget reads that to understand what is the operation that has to be done. We have different categories, different kind of gadgets. We have uh, advisors, so those are gadgets that help you to recommend a uh, configuration for the cluster. For instance, we have a setcon advisor. This is a gadget that captures the different system calls that are executed by a given application. And then this gadget tells you what is the setcon profile that you should be using for that specific application. We have audit. So those are gadgets to check if a security profile is blocking some activity from your application. Again, if you have a second profile, this tool will show you when that second profile is blocking some system calls from your uh, application. Profile, those are for checking the performance of the systems. One example is for checking the latency of the block IO disk on the, on the cluster. Snapshooters are for getting the the status of a given subsystem, for instance, for printing the different processes that are running on the cluster. Top, those are, I will say, one of my favorites. So those gadgets allow you to check what is the resource that is the most used on the cluster. We have, for instance, file top. So this will show you what are the files that are the most used on the cluster. So if you, fa if you have any problems like high IO utilization, by using this gadget, you will be able to understand what is the file that is creating that high IO activity and who is doing that? So what is the pod, what is the container that is trying to read or write that file? And finally, we have tracers. So these are like the most 
traditional ones. If you are familiar with BCC, those are like the snoopers from BCC that allow you to understand different events on the cluster. So when a new process is created, a file is open, a TCP connection is created, and so on. Okay, this is time for a demo of Inspector Gadget. Okay, so the first thing is how to install Inspector Gadget. Well, we can go to the Inspector Gadget repository. There we have the different releases. And for each release, we have the kubectl gadget compiled for different operating systems and architectures. In this case, I'm running a Linux AMD 64 machine, so I'm going to take that binary. And yeah, I only have to download the binary Actually, yeah, that's not directly a binary, that is a compressed file, so I have to uncompress that file. There is the binary there, the license. And to make this binary available as a kubectl gadget plugin, I have to copy that into a path that is available to kubectl. And then I can use this just as kubectl gadget. So, yeah. So, so far we have installed uh, the client part of Inspector Gadget, but we still have to deploy that into the cluster. So if we check the different pods that are running on this gadget namespace, we can see that there is no any pod there. So let's use this kubectl deploy, gadget deploy, sorry. So this is going to install to create all the resources that are needed on the cluster. Uh, it creates some service accounts, some roles. It also pull uh, and creates the daemon set and the different pods in, in the node. So after that command is done, we are ready to use Inspector Gadget. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a different window to run some commands. So yeah, let's start by using one of the categories that I showed you before. This is just to print the different processes that are on my cluster. In this case, I'm printing all the processes in the, in the, in the default namespace. If I, if I want to print the processes in a different namespace, I can, use, I, I can use this dash n option. So those are the processes in the cube system namespace. Actually, the terminal is a little bit small here. So yeah, here we are. Also, if I want to print all the processes in the cluster, I can use this dash a option to print everything so there we have the processes for all namespaces on the cluster. We also have the option to print the sockets. So this is useful to get all the sockets that we have on our cluster. So in this case, we see that uh, the three different replicas of our application that are listening on that given part. Let me show you some of the tracers. So this is to show when a file is open on the cluster. So if I send some request to my application, you can see that in the top we get the file that is being accessed there. So that should be in this that HTML. So unfortunately, there is not enough space on this screen. And on the left part of the terminal, we see all the information related to Kubernetes. We also get all the information on the specific node, like PID, command, and for this specific tool, file descriptor, and so on. Let me try to use a different tool. This is for tracing the TCP connections, but yeah, in this case, that tool prints a lot of information, and the screen is so small here, so I'm going to configure that to only print some of the information that I'm really interested in. So yeah, in this case, I only want to print the, the node, the pod, the type of the event, this is upset or close a process and information related to the IP addresses and, and ports. Actually, yeah, I made a typo there. It was the port, yeah, that's right. So if I try to send requests to my application again, we can see how this is printing the different requests. And what is interesting here is that I get all the requests. So this is what is happening on all the cluster. I mean, not only the, not only the requests that are sent to a specific backend, but I get like the global view of what is happening in my application. Okay, but this is just to understand what, what is what is going on with my application? What about if I have a, an application that is broken? What about if there is something that is not working right 
with my application. So what I'm going to do here is that I will break my application for sure. I I will I won't tell you how I break that I broke that, but yeah, let's see if we are able to fix that by using Inspector Gadget. So I broke my application. I'm trying to send some requests again, but yeah, the application is not responding. We are getting a connection refuse. And in this case, we can see that the different pods are in this crash look back off state. So if we try to see the logs, let me check the logs of the application. I'm going just to use the label to avoid typing the name of the pod here. We can see there in this line that yeah, there is something going on with the bind call. For some reason, we are getting a permission deny error. So yeah, wh what could it be? If you remember, I was configuring some things related to security. So yeah, maybe we are missing a capability on the pod security context. So we have a tracer that is called a trace capabilities that will print the different capabilities that our application is trying to use and will tell us if the kernel is allowing that capability or not. So I'm going to yeah, to scale down and scale up just to force the recreation of the pods. And on the top, we can see all the capabilities that that application is trying to use. If you look at uh, the last line there, we can see that the application trying to use this net bind service and it was denied by the kernel. So what it means is that the kernel is not allowing the application to use this capability. Right, so what, what is happening here in this case is that we don't have that capability on the list. We were dropping all the capabilities, so yeah, I have to add that capability there. Actually, yeah, while, while I was recording the demo, I messed up a little bit with Bean, so it will take a little bit longer until I update that. Okay, I'm almost done, not yet. Actually, yeah, I, I have to close and start from the beginning because I wasn't able to update that there. Here we go. So I'm going to add the capability there. And yeah, I have to reapply that. And yeah, let's try to see if this thing is working. Again, we are getting a connection refuse, so maybe there is another problem. If we try to get information about the pods, pods are running, so it seems to be a different problem in this case. If we get the logs, there is no any useful information there. Everything appears to be working fine. So yeah, let's check the specification of the service that we are using to access this service. Actually, what I want to do here is to print the YAML specification to get the full uh, information about the service. So yeah, what I'm looking here is for the target port to see what is the port that the service should be exposed in the pod. So yeah, the target port is 888 in this case. So how can we know if this is the port that our application is using? Well, we have a different a gadget that is called trace bind. This is going to show us an event when application opens a port on a given port. Again, what I'm going to do is to scale down, scale up, and we can see there what is the port that our application is using. So what was happening in this case is that I have configured the service in a wrong way. I was using the wrong port on the service. So let's, let me update that. I only have to redeploy that. And yeah, let's try again. Okay, this time a different error, but yeah, let me try some more times. Yeah, so sometimes it's working, sometimes it's not working. This is one of those difficult problems to, to debug. So maybe, yeah, we can use this TCP gadget again to see what is happening to those connections. So, I sent a request, it went to Minikube node, and I can see that everything is working fine for that one. But yeah, this one was sent to the Minikube and 02 node, but in this case it wasn't working, so I'm just trying to send some more requests to see if I am able to get more information. So yeah, if you consider, it seems that like all the requests that are going to that Minikube and 02 node are, are not working fine. So. What could be going on there? Maybe there is a networking problem with that node, but actually the, the request is arriving there. 
Well, in this case, let me check the second profile. If you remember correctly, the second profiles are installed on the host, so maybe there is something wrong with the second profile on that specific node. So let me use this audit set con gadget to understand if the second profile is blocking some activity from my application. Yeah. Again, in this case, I have so many information. Let me only print the, the things that I'm interested in. Okay, let me send a request to my application. And yeah, as you can see there, we have that there is this send file system call that was performed by those pods and the code means the action that the kernel took in this case was to kill the process, actually the thread of my application. So what is happening in this case is that probably we are missing that system call in our second profile. So let me SSH into the node, let me update the security profile, the second profile, sorry. So I'm going to check if the send file is there, it's not there, so let me add that just to the beginning. I'm going to save and to restart the pods to be sure that they pick up the right uh, security profile. Okay, so if I try to send more requests again, Okay, no, actually I'm just going to uh, start the audit second again, just to be sure that there is no any more violations of the second profile. So I sent so more requests there and everything is, is working fine there. Of course, this is a demo in a real world scenario. It will be a lot more complicated because there are so more things to look at, but this is just to show you some of the things that you will be able to debug with, by using this inspector gadget tool. So what is the future ahead of this tool? Well, we, we are trying to make this a more a community project, so we are trying to get more involved with the community there, so we are preparing for submitting this as a sandbox to the CNCF. That could happen today, this week, or next week, we are almost ready to do that. And from the technical point of view, we are implementing this API, so if different third-party applications want to consume the data that we are capturing with the cluster, we are going to provide APIs for that. And yeah, just to mention two different talks that are related to this project. So today in the same track in the afternoon, there is going to be a talk for my colleague Jose. This is to show a similar tool that we develop, but this is a tool that doesn't require the API server to work. And on Wednesday, I will be explaining how to generate security profiles by using eBPF-based tools. One of those tools is, is Inspector Gadget. And yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. I'm happy to take any questions that I can have. Thank you so much, Mauricio.